everyone and welcome to the class of business study so students today we will continue with chapter 6 that was staffing and this is second video or part 2 of uh, staffing chapter in the previous video we have completed with uh, till recruitment that is external internal sources of recruitment process of staffing importance or significance of staffing now today in this video we will uh, finish some of few topics okay and we try to con- complete this uh, chapter today only in this video so starting with selection selection is the process of choosing from among the candidates from within the organization or from outside that means in the previous process it was recruitment when we recruit or call the employees for the job now what we need to do is from this recruited employees this is the process of choosing from among the candidates that means from all those candidates we need to choose or select some of the few candidates which we require as per the requirement or need of the organization that is within the organization or from outside we need to select the most suitable person for the current positions or for the future position that is it can be possible that for in a few organization or firms or enterprises there may be some chances or opportunities in future or vacant places may be there or it may be that in present some vac- vacant places are there so selection is a process where a firm or enterprise or the managers or the owners need to select from the recruited employees and those from recruited employees can be from within the organization or can be from outside the organization the process of selections uh, says it is preliminary screening that is when he first uh, the first step for the process of selection will be preliminary screening then sec- selection test employment interview reference check selection decision medical exams that is medical examination or checking job offer and finally the contract of employment will be signed by the new employee the successive stage in selection processes are first is preliminary screening when we say screening means it's just a process of checking or verifying the documents after applications have been received that means as when applications are received from the uh, with the recruitment process some of the uh, candidates who have presented or uh, submitted some application for uh, their profile so they are properly checked so all these documents related to the particular employees okay or candidates it is verified or it is checked properly as regarding the qualification and etc by screening committee screening committee means the managing board or of director or the managers who are going to or the screening committee which needs to select or check or verify the particular person according to their qualification and other such aspects a list list of candidates to be called for employment test are made and unsuitable candidates are rejected altogether that means in this preliminary screening and written test can also be done or made or can be called as employment test in which those who have not performed well will be rejected and those who have performed well uh, or properly then it will be uh, selected second will be the selection test among those who were selected in the employment test these test include the psychological test which are based on assumptions that human behavior at work can be predicted by giving various test like aptitude test personality test intelligence test etc so first test which they are performing is psychological test according to their psychology what is their behavior what is their thinking skills creativity will be tested in this second will be employment test for judging the applicants suitability according to the job that means according to the requirement of the job their employment test will be done in which the aspirants or the candidates must be judged or must be checked according to the their working qualification or working activities third is employment interviews after this employment test or the psychological test they are performed with employment interviews in which they are been interacted by the owners by the the committee which is been there the main purpose of interview is to find out suitability of the candidates that means it is just done or it is just held to find out the suitable candidate for their job to seek or find more information about the candidate then just to take out or get all the information related personal okay all the information related to candidates or working uh, experience from this interviews then third to give the candidate an accurate picture of job 
with details of terms and condition. Then in this same employment interview, it is also cleared if we feel that is the if the managing or preliminary screening uh, committee, if they feel that the candidate is very good, very suitable for our um, enterprise or firm, then they used to tell the terms and conditions which are uh, there in their firms or enterprises and he has been informed about the accurate picture of the job. Then fourth process in this is reference check. That means whatever reference names, that is the name of reference can be of friends, can be relatives, can be of certain entrepreneur, so or can be of certain uh, place or certain job where he was uh, doing before that. So prior to final selection, the prospective employers makes an investigation, that is verification of the references supplied by the applicant in his profile. He undertakes a thorough search or a collection of information into candidates families that means his family background his past employment wherever he was education his police uh, police records everything everything must be checked or verified properly in reference checks then fifth comes selection decision now after undergoing all this process employment test psychological test uh, verification of his documents and everything after that the selection decisions is to be taken. So a list of candidate who cleared the employment test, all the list of candidate who have cleared the employment test, interviews and reference checks, that is three process before that, is prepared and then select candidates are listed in order of merit. That means in order of their points which has been assigned to them in order of merit, they have been selected, it is given. Now sixth is medical or physical examination that means after the selection procedure when a suitable candidate is been selected by the committee then they need to check or verify their physical uh, medical examination must be performed. Uh, so just to assure that physically or mentally that person is uh, good, is healthy which is a requirement for every employee. A qualified medical expert which is appointed by organization should certify whether the candidate is physically fit to the requirement of a specific job, a proper physical exam will ensure a higher standard of health. Why? Because if physically or mentally he is fit, he can give his or he can bring out more efficiencies to the firm. He can do better hard work and will be suitable for that particular prospective job. So a physical exam will ensure a higher standard of health and physical fitness of employees thereby reducing absenteeism. Now absenteeism is there always just because of sickness because if the uh, employee is uh, feeling sick or if he is not well he will not come to the job place and because of his absenteeism uh, works will be uh, not done properly that is why it is very uh, important that physical fitness must be taken of an uh, care of an employee. Now seventh uh, aspect or seventh process uh, step is job offer. Now finally when medically or physically he is fit for the particular post then he is offered the job by the committee after a candidate has clear all hurdles or problems in the selection procedure he is formally appointed formally means officially he is appointed by issuing him an appointment letter now this is a formal application whereby he is invited for that particular job formally by and through an appointment letter the broad terms and conditions pay scale that is what salary he will be offered are integral part of this that means in this appointment letter everything will be given or provided by the committee about the job what kind of job he needs to do the terms and conditions rules and regulation of the enterprise and the pay scale and other such benefit whatever he will be provided everything will be cleared in this appointment letter. Now eight this contract of employment after in invitation for job offer after appointment letter now a contract letter must be signed that is a contract of employment contract can be called as a deed or agreement for one year six years six month whatever the time period may be after getting the job offer, the candidate has to give his acceptance that means after when he received the employee received the job offer he needs to uh, give his uh, grant for that particular or if he, he needs to give his acceptance for that appointment letter which he received after acceptance that means when an employee accepted that job offer on behalf of him both employer and an employee will sign a contract of employment after that both the employer and employee will sign a contract letter which contain terms and condition 
the pay scale, the leave rules, that means how many leaves will be assigned to him, hours of work, that means the timings or duration, mode of termination of employment, that means what kind of conditions when it arises, when he can be terminated. It can be any uh, mode of, uh, so all those modes will be cleared in this contract of employment. After this recruitment and selection, the third process will be training. That means finally he has accepted, the employee has accepted the job offer, the contract has been signed, now he is finally posted for that particular job and he is coming regularly. Now the third stage will be recruitment which we did in previous video, selection today we did and with that the third part will be training. Now here training means just to train that new employees fresh for the firm. So we need to train that is the firm need to train him according to the requirement of the job of the enterprises. So training is the act of increasing the knowledge and technical skills of an employees to increase the knowledge also and to increase the technical skill creativity everything his specialization must be done. So for all this the employee for doing a particular job efficiently so that and why this training is imparted or why this training is given just to increase his knowledge technically also okay his knowledge also and technical knowledge also so that he can work uh, efficiently he can do better hard work okay for the benefits of the or gain of the enterprises. So both existing employees and new employees get acquainted that means existing as well as new employees get acquainted means familiar with their jobs and they increase uh, job related skills and with this training their job related skills are increased. Now what are the benefits of this training to the firm and to the employee that is personally this training is been benefited to the firm how and how it is beneficial for the employee we will do. Now first is for benefit to the firm uh, in regards avoid wastage of time that means if an employee is well trained, skillful, specialized in that his will then it avoid wastage of time, he will consume less time in performing the work, efforts and money that is cost involved in the trial methods will be less. Okay because the employee is trained. This is the benefit for the um, uh, firm. Increase productivity that means the employee's productivity will all automatically increase in terms of quality plus quantity of the work and thereby leading to increase the profits of the firm. Third benefit will be equips future managers to take over in emergency. That means this particular trained person will equip or will train other future managers also, other future employees also in terms of work because he is already trained, now he will be giving training to other juniors, okay. Increase employees morale and when he is properly trained, it's, his confidence will be increased. Decrease absenteeism, he will be less, uh, always be present in the uh, firm or enterprises. There will be decrease in absenteeism from the work and turnover, okay. Response to fast changing environment. When he is well trained, he will respond properly, efficiently to the changes which are take place in external environment. The changes can be technological changes, changes in consumers uh, state of mind, their habits, likes, dislikes and so many other things. So whatever aspects or whatever changes which are dynamic, which are changing or taking place in external environment, he will be more familiar to them. And he can adapt himself according to the changes in the environment when he is well trained. Decrease supervision, that means the managers or the uh, top level need not supervise him. Why? Because he is already trained. He is master or specialized in his work. So need uh, no supervision. Standardization of procedure and safety of operation. He will take care of the standardization of work and the procedure he will follow properly in terms of the tra trained person to the firm. Now what are the benefits to the employees? That means a new fresh employee when he is trained, given training, what kind of changes or what are the benefits given to him? First improved skills and knowledge so better career opportunities. That means the employee himself, he will increase his skills, creativity, his knowledge because of training which has uh, been a help to him. So he can better increase his career opportunities better performance and higher earning. When he is well trained, he can have better earning, he perform better efficiently, 
he can have a better performance and can have a better salary or earnings it makes employees more efficient so less chances of accidents that means the employee is well trained skillful in that particular work so there will be less chances of accidents or errors okay increase satisfaction and morale of employees and the worker or the employee will be satisfied thoroughly and it will increase his confidence in doing the work now what are the training methods after this uh, training of course it's a process of increasing the knowledge technically also and uh, intelligence level also so what are what sort of training methods can be employed by a firm or enterprise the first is on the job method it refers to the methods that are applied at the workplace as the name suggests on the job method means all this this particular method will be used or applied on the job only that means in the firm only he will not be sent outside so it refers to the methods that are applied or used at the workplace where the employee is actually working it means learning while doing that means this process is learning while doing as he is doing the work in the same firm or enterprise he is learning also by this um, the following are the methods of on the job training the first is apprenticeship training under this the trainee is placed under the supervision of an experienced person he can be called as a mentor okay so uh, in regards to an experienced person or a senior person that junior or that new employer trainee will be uh, given a place and he will be learning from his uh, seniors okay an experienced person who is a master in his work who imparts him necessary skill imparts means provides gives so that senior person give knowledge to that junior employee or a trainee related to certain skills some regu uh, regu uh, activities and regulates his performance that means actually that senior or a, a superior will control the performance control the errors mistakes which are done by the trainee or a junior in the process of doing the activities so the training is trainee is given stipend while learning so that he or she can enjoy earn while you learn skims that means he is given a stipend he has given a certain salary or a minimum salary while learning while doing the work under the apprenticeship that is under a particular mentor second uh, method in this on the job is internship training under this method an educational institute enters into agreement now under internship an educational institution which will been added to the firm or enterprises just to enter into an agreement with industrial enterprises for providing practical knowledge to its students by sending them to business organization for gaining practical experience now here what i mean to say is a firm or an enterprises he sends his trainee or his employee to an industrial house where he will do or he will see or uh, observe the work which is done practically and by that he will learn some aspects of doing the work which can be called as internship training now third is induction training okay now in induction training is a type of training given to help a new employee in settling down quickly into the job by becoming familiar with the people the surroundings the job and the business now here induction basically means when a new employee comes or joins the firm he is been introduced to all the employees who are at present uh, doing the work in the firm so it is a type of just a training to help a new employee who tries to settles down who try to adjust with the circumstances with the work into the job and he becomes familiar with all the people who ever are doing with uh, the surroundings and the people whom so ever he will work the duration of such type of training may be from a few hours to a few days and the process of being familiar with the surroundings this particular process stays from few hours to few days also so the induction provides a good opportunity to socialize now this induction training will pro provide an opportunity to the new employee for socializing that is for maintaining better social relations with other people who are surrounded by and brief the new comer within the companies overall and just a new briefing that means must be done or an information on instructions must be uh, given or provided to the new comer with the company's overall strategy that is what is the company's strategy what is the performance standard etc he must be familiar with this that is a newcomer by the all the people who are surrounded by him 
he gets or he collect the knowledge from them if carefully done that means if this induction programs carefully uh, accomplished or done it saves time and cost cost of training is also uh, saved from this in terms of effectiveness or efficiencies now what is the difference between after finishing all the three methods now what is the difference between training and development of course uh, both are somewhat same but still there is a difference between training and development training is concerned with imparting technical knowledge that means training is just to provide to impart or to give technical knowledge in doing a particular job but development is a wider process training is a, a narrow concept whereas development is a wider process concerned with growth of an individual in respect of everything that means he must be well developed in each and every aspect not only technical aspect in which he is trained for but it involve all the respects however both are related that means training and development both are related to each other training helps the employees in learning job that is in terms of technical skills whereas development shapes attitude of the employees attitude or his approach uh, towards the work towards the superiors towards the whole firm or enterprises now what is the comparison between training and development according to these base of uh, differences first is definition comes training and development when we say definition training means imparting or giving skills and knowledge doing a particular job that means during a particular job whereas development it means overall growth of an employee in all the respects or all the aspects including technical skills purpose or main objective or aim the purpose of training is concerned with maintaining and improving current job perf performance that means just to improve or increase the job performance of a newcomer of an employee training is been imparted whereas the purpose of development it seeks to develop competence and skill for future performance that means this same employee when he is new to the employee when he becomes old or senior to the employee he must perform well his attitude his approach towards the work will be good and that is why we perform the development process then methods which can be used for training is it is imparted through on the job training that means this training will be given in terms of on the job it can be off the job and it can be various other trainings whereas in develop in terms of development it is imparted through of the job method that means development is always done of the job only initiatives the boss takes the initiative in training for imparting training to his subordinate that means here in terms of training the boss or the employer is taking initiative he starts with the process of giving training to his newcomers to his new employees whereas in terms of development the individual takes the initiative that means the individual itself he himself takes the initiative for his self growth for his development no superior or seniors or other people will take initiative he himself needs to take initiative for his own development now duration is training programs are organized for short terms that means these training programs are organized for short duration only while whenever he uh, joins the job that is newcomer whereas development takes place over a large that means it takes over a long period of time so dear student this is all about today's video uh, and we will meet again in the next video and starting with the next chapter that is organizing till then thank you goodbye